Welcome to the eKnowledge SAT ACT Power Prep, the what and the how. There are probably lots of ways to describe or talk about the SAT and the ACT, but we are going to explain it based on what the test makers test and how they test it, and also what is in the Power Prep and how to use the Power Prep. But before we proceed, keep in mind that this is just an overview. At the end of this video, there will be two main things that you need to do. First, you need to watch all of the other how-to videos. You can link to those videos at any time from here on the main landing page or from directly inside the virtual classroom in the how to use the program section. Second, you should download all of the officially released exams and familiarize yourself with them. You will use them constantly during your preparations. So what is on the exam? Both the SAT and the SAT test basic content that you should have learned in high school. They divide it between a verbal section and a math section, and then they subdivide it within those two main categories. Within the verbal section, they test reading, standard grammar, logical reasoning or analysis, and vocabulary. Within the math section, they test the basic concepts that you should have learned in high school also. That means arithmetic, algebra, geometry, trigonometry, and what they call data analysis. Within math, they are also directly testing your reading skills, your ability to reason logically, and to a far lesser extent, vocabulary. Okay, now let's take a very high level overview look at how they test the SAT. First and foremost, the SAT is a timed three hour exam with three mandatory graded sections, but the essay is optional and adds about 50 more minutes. The SAT is now graded on a 1600 point scale. It has a total of 154 questions. Of those, 141 of them are multiple choice, and you choose between A, B, C, and D. They drop the fifth choice, the E choice that they used to have. And 13 of those questions are what they call grid-ins, and those appear on the math section only. They're also called student-produced responses. But probably the biggest change on the SAT is that there is no longer a penalty for guessing. So that means guessing is mandatory if you don't know the answer. Never leave a question without an answer. Okay, let's take a little bit closer look at the three graded sections. First is the reading comp section. It's also called evidence-based reading. It's a 65 minute section, has 52 questions, and is worth 400 of the 1600 possible points. Second within verbal is the writing and language exam. It's actually a grammar and logic test. It is 35 minutes long, has 44 questions, and is also worth 400 of the 1600 total possible points. And finally the math section. It's 80 minutes long, that's an hour and 20 minutes. It has 58 total questions and is worth one half or 800 of the possible 1600 points. 20 of the 58 questions, they don't allow you to use a calculator. But 38 of those 58 questions, they do allow you to use a calculator. So 38 questions, you get to use a calculator. 20, you don't get to use a calculator. Of the 58 questions, 45 of them are multiple choice and 13 are grid-ins. Those are the student produced response ones. And then also the essay is optional. It's 50 minutes long and you get one essay question. Okay, let's look at reading comp, also known as evidence-based reading. It tests your reading skills, your vocabulary, and your logical reasoning skills. Basically, can you read 800 or so words in a passage and grasp the overall point, the subpoints, specific words and ideas, and also can you extend the logic of some of the content? It's a 65 minute test, has five passages and 52 questions, and it's worth 400 of the 1600 total possible points. Each passage has 10 or 11 questions, 
And usually one of the five passages is actually a dual passage setup where you have two shorter passages that compare and contrast a given point. But the total number of words will still be roughly 800 or so, and the questions are the same sort as the other passages. You will also get one passage each, U.S. or world history, the U.S. founding, and the social sciences like econ, psych, psychology, etc. And you will get two passages from the hard sciences like biology, chem, physics, astronomy, etc. So let's take a quick look at an actual reading comp passage. This is the passage that was taken from a short essay, actually not so short, by Virginia Woolf. You can see they give you a little bit of an explanation here at the top about what it's about, and we'll go into great detail on how to approach these. And then you'll see this is line one, and as we scroll down, you get to line 80, so this has 80, one, two, three lines about 825, 850 words. And the very first question right off the bat is what is the main purpose of the passage? And then you get four answer choices and you have to select. And you can see it starts with question 32 and goes through, here's like question 37 where it gives you specific lines within the passage and asks you to go back and understand what was being said at those specific places and then it goes through uh, question number 41. So you can see that the passage is about 83 lines and has about 11 questions. Now this passage, it's actually a dual passage, dual setup like we were talking about. You can see it has passage one and then it has passage two. Passage one, passage two. And you read the first passage, it has about 40 lines. You read the second passage, oh, actually it has 45 lines. And you read the second passage and it goes from 45 to 85. So the total number of lines is roughly the same. And then in addition to the normal kinds of questions that you'll get on reading comp, when there's a dual passage, they will ask you questions that compare and contrast the two in addition to the normal kinds of questions. So that's a quick look at what a reading comp passage and questions look like. Now let's take a quick look at the writing and language section. This is actually misnamed. It should be called grammar and logic, but they call it writing and language, so don't be fooled by that. It's 35 minutes long, it has four passages and 44 questions, and is worth 400 of the 1600 total points. You will read passages that have underlined sections that indicate where a potential problem exists and then select an answer choice that fixes the problem. But keep in mind that one of the answer choices, answer choice A, will always be no change. So you have the given underlined section and then you'll have no change or B, C, D all present possible fixes. The good thing about this section is that it's based on learnable grammar rules. In other words, it's very objective. It's like math. It's based on a set of rules. So like math, you can make big improvements in this section the more you study. In addition to the grammar type questions, there are some pure logic questions where they ask you whether to add or delete sentences based upon the logical flow of the passage. So let's look at a writing and language passage and its questions. Okay, this passage is entitled The Consolation of Philosophy, and you can see that it has about 10 or 11 questions. It's 34 through 44. And you can see that the no change option here has the A option on all of them. This is question 34, and it gives you an underlying section of the passage and then it tells you that there may be something wrong with this and it gives you options on how to fix it. Question 37 gives you a logic based question. Which choice most effectively sets up the information that follows? So these are this is new information that they're asking you to consider in answering the question. So it's based on the flow of the argument or the flow of the information and which one of these options would best set it up and you can see that there's no no change option. So when you don't have a no change option, 
that's your clue that it's a logic-based question. And here's an example. Question number 42 says, at this point, the writer is considering adding the following sentence. And then it gives you the sentence and then it asks you, should the writer do it or shouldn't the writer do it? So that's another logic-based question in addition to all the grammar-based questions. Okay, that's a quick look at the writing and language section. Okay, let's take a quick look at math. Like grammar, math is based on a set of known objective rules. So the more you study, the more you will learn and improve. This section tests arithmetic, algebra, geometry, trig, and what they call data analysis, where they give you charts and data, and you have to figure out various ways to manipulate the data. It's an 80 minute test, that's one hour and 20 minutes. It has 58 questions. It's worth half of the total 1600 points, so it's worth 800 points. It has 38 questions where you get to use a calculator and eight of those are grid in questions where you produce the response and 30 of them are multiple choice. It has 20 questions where you don't get to use a calculator and five of those are grid ins. So there's 15 multiple choice and five grid ins in the no calc section. That gives you a total of 30 multiple choice calculator questions, eight grid in calculator questions, 15 multiple choice no calculator questions and five grid in no calculator questions. That's a total of 45 total multiple choice and 13 grid ins. Also very important, you should Google what calculators are permitted on the exam so that you can get the latest list because it changes all the time and you want to make sure if you're going to bring a calculator, which you should, that you have one that's accepted. You don't want to get there and have them take your calculator away. Okay, here's an example of the no calculator section. It's 25 minutes, 20 questions, and clearly right up here they show you no calculator allowed. And it's just a basic math test. They're going to test all that basic math. Arithmetic, algebra, geometry, trigonometry, data analysis, uh, just like you've learned all throughout high school. They have made a push to become more verbal if you can say that in some of their questions and you can see here there's a lot of setup on some of these some are just a basic math problem like you see but some of them have a lot more verbal like written information at the start okay this next section is five questions and it, no calculator still and it's the grid in part so this we're going to go into more detail but this shows you how you grid in or produce your own response so no calculator and you can see there's no ABCD you you take the the question you have to ca figure it out and then grid in bubble in your answer um, without being able to select ABCD and then this section allows you to use the calculator it's 55 minutes 38 questions and it's just the same kind of test as the no calculator it's just you get to use the calculator now so just a basic math test this part right here shows you some of the data analysis where they give you charts and data and you manipulate the data in various ways here's another example of a data analysis where they're giving you a budget and actually has two questions that refer to this same data so both these questions refer to this data right here and then the last section of math shows you can use a calculator and this is the grid in or the student produce response section with a calculator and again it's just basic math type questions the same kinds of questions that you've had in the other parts of the math it's just that now you can use a calculator but you don't have you can see you don't have ABCD you have to produce the response yourself and those are a little bit more difficult questions because there's really no way to guess. Okay, that's a quick look at the math part of the test.